We welcome into the program the president of the Montreal Baseball Project and a former Montreal Expos player, Mr. Warren Cromarty, live from Florida. How's it going? Patty Ross, good evening. Bonsoir, Maria. What are you, what are you up to, buddy? Well, just finished watching a couple of ball games. Uh, the Yankees, of course, pounded uh, the uh, Texas Rangers again, hitting three run bombs, but you hit another one. Then I watched uh, the Marlins uh, lose to uh, another last place team, the Philadelphia Phillies. So just kicking back, man, just enjoying it. And uh, what this time of year, baseball is a good time. You play along with the manager or what? Uh, this time of year, I'm looking at uh, final pieces of puzzles. I'm looking at bullpens. I'm looking at first two or three, four starters here. Power pitchers. That's what plays this. You got to keep an eye on this. September means a lot when they're going to be calling these kids up uh, the big names for themselves. A couple of these kids, a couple of new faces, be they're going to be put in positions there to possibly hurt other teams or any contentions just for the reason they don't know these players. So. That's another little uh, dimension of the game uh, toward the end of the season is that, that you look forward to. Sometimes I think is overlooked. Warren Cromartie joining us here on the show. Hey, Warren, I was just uh, coming from my sponsor, which is a, a place called Cheeburger. Cheeburger here in Montreal. It's a big chain in the States. And the reason I mention it is um, they're the uh, concession stand. They're, they have concessions with the Yankees uh, at the Yankee Stadium. But um, the owner of the, uh, the establishment here in Montreal uh, wanted to uh, tell me that uh, – he says, if, he says, for life, any Montreal Expo player that ever comes into his place, doesn't matter if they played one inning or one game or ten years, he said they eat for free. So uh, when you're back in town, let me know. I'm there, man. Cheeburger, cheeburger, I'm there, cheeburger, I'm there. Yeah, it's downtown, like you, the way the place you like it, the, uh, the area you like. Okay. Look forward to it, man. All right. Uh, well, it's the uh, – I'm not sure if you were aware of this, Warren, but I actually found this on Twitter – it was retweeted by a whole bunch of people. Uh, some morning show in Toronto uh, threw the stat out, and then uh, a whole bunch of other people uh, mentioned it as well. Today is actually the 44th year anniversary of the Expos officially joining the National League. 1968, the year before they came into existence, apparently today was announced that they would join the National League. Yeah, that's awesome. And I heard the introduction uh, of the Expo song. It just... I get chills every time I hear it. I, when I hear the song, I, I go back. John McHale, uh, the terrific man he was, what he's the general manager for the Expos, and handing him, of course, all the guys inside the front office at the early ages and winning the first game in New York and coming home to a big parade uh, was quite something for all all the all the you know people that live in Canada. And uh, worldwide, and really was uh, a, a very, very, uh, very, very exciting time. And uh, yeah, today's a great day, man. To talk about any time to talk about baseball in Montreal is a great day. Where what was it like on the uh, on the streets in in the late seventies here, early eighties in Montreal? Did 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 you get recognized? Because you know today it's quite different. I, I was uh, in two thousand eleven, oh. summer of. 2011, I'm downtown at the uh, Queen Elizabeth getting ready to board a, a, a private bus to Quebec City for a charity softball game. And uh, there's uh, Pedro Martinez walking downtown unnoticed, which is, to me, just crazy. I mean, no, uh, but, no, but it, it, you have to look at this, man. The way, you know, you and I talk about this from time to time, and I know how passionate you are. I know how loyal you are to your, to your fan base and the game of baseball and the city of Montreal. But you got to understand something. Baseball's a business. Baseball's a business. You know, the bottom line, I mean, that's why you gotta, that's why you gotta cherish what you have when you have it. Uh, that goes for the team, that goes for the guys we lost, uh, that 81 team. But, uh, I think you did. And, and I think, you know, you answer your question about being recognized during the 70. Man, it was crazy. It was started to make a move here because I think during that time, the early 70s, when we came in, we pretty much set the tempo of, you know, the possibilities of uh, potential uh, uh, World Series uh, contention. I'm winning a World Series. We brought a lot of excitement the early 77s when we came in. So, yeah, I was got to, especially in 79, when we almost backdoored the playoff losses to We Are Family, to Willie Stargell and uh, John Candelaria and those guys like that. And uh, 79, we almost, you know, and then uh, 80, we got, got good in 81. We found ourselves and 
you know, the rest history always in the nineties, the ninety four team. So uh yeah, it was tough. It was tough. But you know, things can get back to normal in Montreal with a little time and uh some effort here and um the recognition. I think things can come back to uh put us back on the map because you know, Matt, you see the people walking around Montreal. You see them all walk, walking around Montreal with the with the hat and the apparel. The, the kids are wearing apparel. You see a hat there, you know, net there, and shirt there, or whatever. So the, you know the spirit is still alive. So uh, that, that's a good thing. Warren, what about uh, the stadium? You guys, when you guys came in in seventy seven, did you know it was a dump even when it opened? I mean, did you know no, it was that no. bad back then? Because obviously, you know, it's been voted with the worst stadium in the history of Major League Baseball. Well, so. Uh, I think Marty, Marco Marco's was, doubled over here on the board and cracking up about it. Uh, the well, you uh, know what? No, it's, uh, you guys can look at it now because you had your moments in there. When we came in in 1977 in the Big O with no roof, watching the guys clock in making forty seven, fifty dollars, two hundred dollars an hour, just sitting out down and watching us play the game of baseball with a brown bag in it. Yeah, we remember that. We having to walk in the showers all the way to the left center field and walk to the brand new showers. Uh, yeah, we never did could get the the, the right uh, fixture on the wall in the outfield. It was always a big slab of two by fours all the way around that thing. Yeah, we were happy to be there. And we, I mean, we were lucky. We were lucky. We were happy, and uh, we were very uh, very uh, happy to be in the majors. We have a, we had a great manager in Dick Williams. I mean, we're moving into our own little place from Jerry Park and. At least that history is still there, and we're trying to make a name for ourselves. I mean, we didn't we didn't mind it at all. You know, the scenes were out there. We complained about it, but you know, the result was the rest. Did you did you hear about the uh, crazy quirky fact today uh, out of the Merriam Webster Dictionary and Gary Carter? Did you hear about this today? Yeah, I heard about the F bomb. He say that a lot, and uh, because you know he was that type of guy, and and uh, it was a very very unique cliche that. Very simple, very pointed, but a guy like that, you wouldn't, you know, it's just a little twist of story, but, you know, I understand it. It works. <laughs> so he wasn't a guy that, that swore a whole lot? Oh, no. No. Uh-uh. Elliot, uh, Elliot Price told a story this morning, uh, I guess where when he was in the stands as a fan uh, early on in the 70s, where he was, uh, you know, behind the plate and Gary Carter, a ball got by him, whether it was a pass ball or a uh, wild pitch or something like that, and right near the screen looking into the crowd, he was he was upset, and he said, gosh darn. Yeah, he would say that along with uh, Elliot's dad or just ripping him a new one, you know, from the, <laughs> from the stands up there. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was quite boastful up there along with Elliot, those two guys. So, uh, you know, they let him have it all the time. Yeah, but he was... He was uh, he was a pure gentleman. What you saw is what you got. He wasn't a phony. He wasn't a fraud. Just uh, winding up with uh, Warren Cromartie of the Montreal Baseball Project. Where, where'd you come up with the name? It's just so uh, so descriptive, right? I mean, it's uh, you just <laughs> first thing off the top of your head, right? Let's call it the uh, well, uh, Montreal it, Baseball Project. Well, it was a, it was you know I, I thought about it and uh, and uh, it, it was definitely a a project. To, to begin with, and uh, with things like the right word, and um, and uh, Montreal Baseball Project came along with it, and pretty much described it exactly what it is. Uh, we are Montreal. We are a group from Montreal. Uh, we love baseball. We love playing baseball, and uh, in the community, we love to uh, entertain, and uh, hopefully, um, uh, if, uh, in the near future. Uh, uh, bring bringing baseball back uh, at a major league level uh, back to the city of Montreal. So uh, you know, with that said, and uh, uh, I'm still working on my little thing here with the project. Uh, uh, we are making uh, progress on a few things. I'm very happy about that. That's all I can say about now. But um, um, it's been it's been tr- tremendous, and uh, we have a little way we have a little ways to go. But uh, I like where it's going, and uh, you know, as I can say, it's stay tuned. Uh, uh, it's not going to be something that's started and forgotten. I can tell you that. It is, things take time, and especially when you're dealing with two languages at the, at the beginning of it. So uh, I'm off and running with it, and uh, 
stay tuned.